This is Matthew Dennis Lewis from the Queen's Gambit, and you're watching The Arroyo Show. Come on in, you guys. Welcome to the show. This is The Arroyo Show. My name is Brandon Arroyo. If it's your first time here, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. What a guest we have for you today. You can see him on the wildly successful Queen's Gambit. He is playing Matt, and he is Matt. Matthew Dennis Lewis. Thank you for joining us today. How are you, brother? Doing good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for giving us some of your time today. Let's let's dive right into it. So, what a show this Queen's Gambit has been. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about it and just your reaction to the the love and support that this show has been receiving? Yeah, I mean, completely blown away. Um, we went into the show, you know, expecting it to be good quality. You know, working with the phenomenal actors that we were with, we knew that that would be next level. And we were working again with the writer and creator of Godless, uh, Scott Frank. He also is the one who brought together the Queen's Gambit. So we knew deep down that it would be an amazing show, but we weren't expecting it to be an overnight success the way it was. Like just blew up worldwide and it was mostly by word of mouth because there wasn't really a lot of advertising for it so to even just see everyone sharing it and getting all their friends and family and co-workers it, you know it's just phenomenal to see yeah and there's not a lot of shows that you know are blow up the way that this one did and especially i think you know to have something that fans are this passionate about during quarantine is a really cool thing to have too uh what does it mean for you to be able to be a part of something that's bringing people joy during a time when a lot of people are locked in their houses uh it's incredible and you know a lot of people have actually reached out and said that you know and like especially chess some people are like oh yeah i bought chessboard at the beginning of the shutdown but i never used it but now i'm obsessed and you know now people are learning and people are taking online classes and it's really incredible like we actually had a couple people reach out and being being like you guys are actually like a part of history now and you know that actually like blows your mind when you think about it because you know of all the things in 2020 one of the most memorable things is the queen's gambit and that's just something you can't take away yeah, and it's uh, imagine something that you had, you know, hoped for when you had originally left New York to make your way to Hollywood back in the day. Um, let's go back and just look at your journey because it's been, you know, you've been in this game for a while now. You've been acting. You're still acting. Uh, when did you first get the bug to want to be involved in the entire acting world? Well, you know, it was something that my brother and I were always kind of, you know, toying around with when we were growing up. We made little home videos with our friends and stuff. But growing up in upstate New York in a very, very rural, small hometown, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for that. Um, so it wasn't until, you know, Russ had made the jump to New York City to go to an acting conservatory that we really, like, thought about it being like a viable option for us. So, you know, he went there and, you know, really started to fall in love with it and, you know, made me more interested in it so that I made a leap to New York and you know once we were there just the energy of the city you know everyone no matter what reason you go to that city you find the energy to support it which is amazing and so that's where it really began was once we made that jump to New York City. There's something special about New York City that I think is just there's a romance to being in the city of New York where Broadway is world renowned. And obviously, you know, there's a lot of great TV that gets made in New York as well. Um, so what ended up making you make the jump from the East Coast to the West Coast and making your way out to Hollywood? Well, that jump is an interesting story. Um, I, you know, I was involved with acting and a little bit of modeling and stuff, and I kind of got deterred from the industry a little bit. You know, it just wasn't, the business side of it wasn't really what I had expected it to be. You know, and it's enough to really turn anyone away from it if you aren't prepared for it. But um, at that time, I was also falling in love with another passion of mine, which was Muay Thai kickboxing. You know, and I was training and competing in that. And it came to a point in time where, you know, I had kind of put acting on the back burner and I was debating on whether, you know, what do I want to go with next? Like, what path am I going to choose? Do I want to continue fighting and, and, you know, kind of go the pro route or do I want to actually, you know, pursue what I moved to New York City for? And that was the deciding factor of whether I went to L.A. or not. 
And so like I, I packed like two bags and I was like, I'm going to do the whole pilot season thing. I'm going to go to you know LA for a few months, feel it out, see what happens. And I went in January and then never went back to New York. So, you know, I kind of just fell into it. Do you still do any of the Mu- Muay Thai uh, workouts? Do you still work that out at all? Yeah, I do still train and do pad work with like my brother and friends. I don't compete anymore, but you never know what will happen. Maybe someday I'll get back into the ring, but well, I'll, uh, I'll- I do. I'll tell you what, when we're back in Los Angeles, I want to come to one of your workouts. We'll put a little wireless mic on you and and just check out all the Muay Thai. I'd love to see you in action doing some Muay Thai. For sure. We'll do that. Let me know when you're here. Sounds, sounds good, man. All right. So let, let's get back into the acting because obviously a huge role for you, Donnie Devlin, in the Emmy Award winning series Godless. Um, can we talk a little bit about that and just what it was like to finally have, you know, a taste of something that was, you know, that large and a project of that magnitude and to be working on something like that? Yeah, that's what they call the 10 year overnight success, first of all. You know, you know, that's what a lot of people don't, you know, they don't understand a lot of times is how much you have to do before you get that one role that really gets your recognition. Um, but that was a phenomenal role. Um, my brother Russ and I, we really got to like dive deep into those characters uh, because they aren't just everyday characters, the Devil and Twins. You know, for anyone who's seen the show, um, they're dirty, gritty, kind of evil. Like, they're they're crazy guys but what really helped with that was the world that we were immersed in like they created like they built the town of la belle just for the show like they created that we were filming at other locations that have been used in westerns you know since the beginning of hollywood and we even got to take part in what they call cowboy camp before we actually started filming you know, all the, you know, the gang, you know, they flew them all in and we all got to shoot and do horseback riding. And it stuff. sounds awesome. <laughs> like, they made it really easy to get in the character. But, you know, it was once you're on that, you felt like you were there in the 1800s. It's crazy. So to be in a project like that, where you get to really dive into the world of these characters, that's something that's so unusual and really specific to acting. And I, I would have to imagine that that or I guess I should ask, is that something that really just makes you love acting that much more when you get to dive into a role like that where it puts you in a completely different world that you'd never be in outside of being in the acting career? Yeah, for sure. It's it's definitely one of those bucket list items. You know, like as an actor, it's like there's certain things you want to do. I you know for my brother and I, one of those things was a Western because, you know, you get to get into that character. It's a different era. It's different wardrobe. You know, every role is a good one, but, you know, you can be a doctor, a lawyer or whatever any day of the week. But when you actually get to be like this gritty, backwoods, toothless guy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> shooting up towns, like that's just something that doesn't happen every day. All right. Let's talk about Burning Shadow. So you play the role of Charlie. Um, what was that like for you and, and just your memories of that experience, Burning Shadow? That was that was a fun shoot. Um, it happened really quickly. Uh, we found out that we were going to shoot it, and then two weeks later we were shooting it. Uh, but what it made it really confusing and interesting at times was that the director and a lot of the crew they were all French speaking. So it was it was really funny at times, like just trying to like pick up on like okay that's what they mean by that. That we were starting <laughs> to piece together a little bit of French along the way. Uh, it was really fun, but also like. For not a spoiler alert, but for anyone watching, uh, Russ playing a homeless blind guy was just really fun to direct him around set, being like, "Okay, this way, you have to walk around like a little kid because <laughs> he can't see with his like blinding contacts." There's certain things that happen on set. It's almost like uh, when I was in sports, you would call it the game within the game. That's kind of like the memory within the memory of right. working on a project like that. Um, okay, so the Queen's Gambit. Let's go ahead and circle on back to that because yeah. it's obviously such a huge success right now. Uh, when you are looking back on some of the memories that you had on set for the queen's gambit what really stands out to you as something that you're like that it's one of the first things that comes to mind for you one of the biggest memories is walking back into a family um because scott brought scott brought back five actors from godless that we had ever known and worked with so to be reunited with them was amazing but then also scott our director of photography our you know editor our script supervisor like they were all also godless alum so it was really nice to already have that cohesive family and everyone immediately get along and know how to work with each other so that was one of the most memorable things Uh, but besides that is we were in berlin shooting for three months and you know we 
weren't shooting every day. So we got a lot of downtime to just, you know, fully engross ourselves in that lifestyle, you know, and experience the German way. It was really cool. There's such a difference between a show that will air once a week versus a movie versus a miniseries like this, where you just get all of that product thrown at you all at one time when it's a Netflix series. So what was it like for you? How did you spend the day when it was first released? Because is it something where as an actor, you watch the whole thing in one sitting or do you say, all right, no, I got to spread this out. I'm going to, I'll check it out over the next couple of days, maybe one or two episodes a day. Well, you know, I spend the whole first like week just fully engrossed and responding to people like texts and DMs and messages <laughs> and stuff. But um, normally, you know, especially even with Godless, we flew to New York and we had a premiere for it. You know, we watched the first two episodes, so we got to enjoy that beforehand before it was released. Uh, for this, obviously, we couldn't do that because of COVID. So we were lucky enough to where they actually sent us, you know, watermark links and we could watch the first two episodes. So at least we were able to enjoy the first two episodes and then take that time to like respond to everyone. Um, but. I spread it out. I did the same thing with Godless. I did the same with this. I was like, I don't want to blow through it in one day. So I like intentionally would make, no matter how bad I wanted to watch it, I made sure that I set it a few days apart and it took me like a week and a half to watch it. But I wanted to enjoy it. So you mentioned having people in the set with you also that were involved with Godless. You had Russell there with you. Um, what was it like just to have that sort of class reunion of sorts from the Godless class reunion now working on the Queen's Gambit? Um, obviously, I would imagine that there's some familiarity, which is helpful. Um, what else was it? What else would you be able to say about just having that sort of vibe of being back together with everyone? I mean, it was amazing because like, especially like Christian Seidel and Sam Soul, like we, we were, we spent so much time with them on the side of Godless. So when we were in Berlin shooting Queen's Gambit, like it was just so nice. We were like going out to restaurants together and, you know, walking around the parks and, you know, meeting Christian's like two twin sons. And like, it was just, it's like being there with your family. It was like, we were on a family vacation but we're also doing this thing on the side. You know? <laughs> and that thing on the side has just so happened to become one of the most, <laughs> the largest, biggest followings of 2020. Um, right. To have this in your back pocket and just have, or to, not in your back pocket, but to have this now in the rear view mirror of having completed the first season of it. Um, what do you think about it as a whole? Just when you look back at the project as someone who's worked on it, what are your thoughts on the Queen's Gambit? My thoughts are just, you know, like I said before, like completely blown away. Like when we were there, we knew it was going to be special, but to see just how it's affected, like the world, the chess community, like sales are up a thousand percent. Like you can't even find chess boards in some stores, you know, tournaments like are up a hundred percent. Like it's crazy to think that we're a part of a phenomenon and that we took this like show about chess and you know quirky characters and you know people who may have been considered the nerds in school are now the cool kids and everyone wants to be a part of the queen's gambit so I was gonna say, you you guys changed the culture to an extent i mean uh for those of you guys that haven't heard the the tagline just yet orphaned at the tender age of nine introvert beth Harmon discovers the masters discovers and masters the game of chess in the 1960s usa but child stardom comes at a price okay so chess were you very good at chess prior to this show do you feel the need to now <laughs> study the game of chess a little bit deeper because i know people are going to be coming up to you and trying to challenge you at chess in the future <laughs> i know I've, I've been worried about that people being up come on let's do a match but uh no we weren't good at chess <laughs> when we began the show thankfully though you never actually see our characters play so we didn't have to be experts but the cool thing is is that we did have chess masters and grandmasters on set and we all went through coaching and chess training so we did learn how to do you know a proper chess opening you know for those who don't know like there's proper things like an opening a mid game an end game and so we did get to learn the differences and how to navigate through those but it's really up to you to fully understand the quantum amount of moves that there actually is and be able to utilize that in the right way. What can you say about Anya? I mean, she has become, you know, that is such a great performance in this series. Um, just your thoughts on her performance. And, and I mean, obviously she's fantastic. Uh, your, your thoughts on, on her performance in this, this series. I thought her performance was absolutely incredible. For someone to be able to captivate the world with nothing but glances and stares, 
speaks volumes, I think, on her capability of being an actor. And I, I think this really showcased her talent where, you know, if you haven't heard of her before, like everyone's going to know her now. And on set, she was just tremendous to work with. Super nice, super sweet. You know, we joked and got along great. Like we wish we could have had more time to hang out with her, but she was too busy learning like 300 games of chess because they had to learn all those moves and they're all real games that they were modeled after. Um, but she, she made set such a pleasant place to be and I would love to work with her again. To the fans that have been engulfed in this show since they started watching it a couple of months ago, or oh, we're just barely coming up on two months now. Um, to the people that have been dedicated to the show, what do you have to say to them for their, all their love and support of the product you guys created? I mean, a million times, thank you. And like, I'm trying to share as much as I can, everyone. <laughs> if you tag it, I'll share it, you know, because I do want to like support everyone because. There are some amazing artists stepping forward, you know, making characters and drawings and paintings. Uh, someone sent me, a friend of mine sent me stickers, you know, that someone is now making characters. And it's just so humbling to know that so many people out there, you know, feel connected to you or the character and want to then you know, use their own talents to like show support for the show, which is amazing. As we look back at your training here, as we begin to wind down the interview, when you first started getting into acting, obviously for most actors, there's a time where you think this is very difficult. This is something that's brand new. Um, where, what are some memories that you have of your time when you first began training in acting? Um, mostly just sticking to the grind. You know, I never, you know, went to a proper conservatory or school for acting. Um, which a lot of people, you know, some people didn't think that was the best move, you know, in the beginning because they like said that I should take this teacher or that teacher. Um, but there was, when I was getting into it, there was nothing really that I truly fully connected with, but I really enjoyed, I found myself finding individual classes and teachers along the way, you know, and would take like a couple months here and a couple months there. And that is, um, it's a better way for me to learn because I like to see how different people do it, what different people have to say, because everyone has a different objective and opinion, you know, and some people are going to say one way is right and one way is wrong. So I don't want to put anything in a box, you know, and I really enjoyed being able to learn from multiple people along the way. I always love to wind down the interviews with this question, the booking story. Do you remember when you got the call that you were booked on this show? Because it's a, it, when it's people that you've worked with before, it can always be a little bit different. Uh, what, uh, what was your call and who were you with? Who was the first person you told? Well, so it's a funny story with this one. We didn't really get the call. So um, what happened was, uh, we, like I mentioned, worked together with Scott Frank before on Godless. And, you know, we had you know, seen him at the After Emmy party for Netflix, you know, after Godless won. And, you know, we just had a really good relationship with him. And he said, you know, I really want to work with you guys again. I'll be tapping on the shoulder soon. And, you know, so we just held that in our back pocket and just hoped for it. And then we flew to New York City and we were filming an episode of Blue Bloods. And Scott had always said, like, if you're in town, let me know, we'll, you, we'll grab a bite. So we did. And so one of our days off from filming, we went and grabbed breakfast with Scott. And that's when he sat down. He's like, so this is what I'm working on. This is this. These are the roles that I created. And he created those roles for us because those, the characters that Matt and Mike aren't in the Queen's Gambit book, which the series is based on. So, you know, just to have that, like, moment was just like awestruck and we were both so happy and grateful for him uh and so that's when we found out and then as soon as we left we called our parents we're like hey guess what <laughs> so, so they were the first call but that's how we found out you know and i gotta imagine that's a real gratifying feeling just to know that someone that you'd worked with before thought enough of the work that you had done previously that they said you know what i gotta work with these guys again i can't wait to make it happen let's make it happen that's got to be a really i would imagine a really gratifying feeling it's truly the thing that you would hope for in your career to make that impression on someone that they would want to work with you again, you know, and that just that's all the, you know, praise or anything you can get would be from that. He is Matthew Dennis Lewis. You can see him in the Queen's Gambit. Be sure to go and check it out. Matthew, thank you so much for giving us some of your time today. It was a privilege to chat with you. Yes, thank you for having me, Brandon. 